Hello and welcome to Omron's quick tip video series. This video we're going to talk about tasks. Tasks are where the programs are executed. Once you write the programs, and you can write hundreds of them, you need to know when and how fast to run each program. We do this in task settings. In the main window here, we can see there's a primary task that will always be enabled and is always the fastest running task. Rule of thumb, it's synchronized with your EtherCAT system. If your EtherCAT is refreshing, if this task is running at one millisecond, your EtherCAT is refreshing at one millisecond. If it's half a millisecond, then your EtherCAT refreshes at half a millisecond. All of your motion code should be in this task. You can also add your ladder code. What happens though is this task becomes busier and busier as you put more code in it. The secondary place you can put the code is in priority 16 periodic task. It runs slower than the pri primary task. Basic choices of 1 to 100 milliseconds, but never faster than the primary task. These two tasks are peculiar in the fact that both of them have the ability to synchronize to the I.O. None of the other tasks have that ability. Why is that important? Typically when you run a program, you do not want the status of an input to change in the middle of your program. When we write our program, we assume that if an input is on on line one, that it is still on near the end of the program. Because these two programs refresh at different rates, if the I.O. Was, was attached to the primary task in this case, it could turn on and off 10 times before this periodic task is done, which is no good. And I'll get back to that on how to set that properly in a minute. There are Two more tasks, 17 and 18, which are also periodic, the same kind of period of execution, but they do not synchronize with the I.O. So these tasks are used more for some background math, some background housekeeping, uh, maybe processing some text. There are two other tasks, they're event tasks, 8 and 48. These you would call with an instruction from the main program. These would typically be tasks which you want to run once. Uh, maybe processing a new batch, recalculating a new CAM. Uh, they'd be used for those type of tasks. You'll notice there's no interrupt tasks. The way the NJ deals with very fast I.O is it has a time clock in all of its I.O. It timestamps when it, something happens and brings it back to the primary task with a timestamp. The second window, actually, I mentioned that the I.O. can be synchronized to one of these two tasks. You do that in this window. Each input card, output card on the local rack or I.O. system can be synchronized to one of the, either one of the tasks. Again, why do we do this? So that it doesn't change state in the middle of my task. I would assign it to the primary task to get optimum speed. I would assign it to the periodic task zero if I didn't want it to change state, because periodic task zero runs much slower than the primary task. This is where I assign my programs. I, I chose each of the tasks that I enabled up here. And when I click here, all the programs that are available to me, I can put in each task. You may ask, why so many programs? I could have station one which is the same as stations two through nine, I would end up copying them and create a program for each station. I would then assign them all 
to a task. The next thing is variables. The global variables are considered I.O. So we can force the synchronization of data coming in through, let's say, Ethernet IP, a global variable, to a task. So that, again, it cannot change state in the middle of my task. This isn't done very often. This is a overview of all your tasks, all the programs in them, and status. It would tell you running, not running, whatever it is. This one's a bit more important. This normally would have a bar graph right here. It would start off light blue, get into the blue. It would show you max and dark blue, but it would also turn red if the program could not execute in time. It also tells you the maximum times or the number of times it exceeds the maximum period. If you notice, most people will put most of their code in the primary task. If they notice that this task is turning red or dark blue and they don't like that, they will try to extract parts of the code and put it in periodic task zero offloading some of the work. If periodic task zero starts to overload, then they may wish to try putting some of it in periodic task one. This allows the motion code and all the code that has to execute quickly to execute in the time that we specified, be it half a millisecond, a millisecond, two milliseconds, or four milliseconds. It is important that the primary task executes on time and this is how we balance the workload. The end.